Hello my friend, today we will take a look at some of my most favorite cameras that I recommend for traveling. I would say that besides the usual stuff that makes a good camera, there are two specific things that make a good travel camera. Those are the portability and the versatility. In this video we will take a look at the cameras that are in my opinion the most suitable for traveling in 2019. I will start with my most favorite type of cameras for traveling. Those are compact crop sensor interchangeable lens cameras. What I really like about these cameras is the size to performance ratio. Probably the most popular cameras in this category are Sony A6000 series cameras. I've been using A6500 for a long time and I think that it is still a great travel camera. It has very good 24 megapixel APS-C sensor, reliable hybrid autofocus system and in-body image stabilization, all packed in very small body. It provides great stills quality and very detailed 4K video with no crop. The controls are also pretty good for the size. It also has some weaknesses though. The screen is not great, the battery life is below average and the menu system is quite outdated, but it is still a very good package overall. A6400 is an alternative with forward facing screen, even better autofocus, lower price and some other advantages but it has no in-body image stabilization. I've used the A6500 for traveling with 16-50mm f3.5-5.6 to kit lens. Optically it is not great, but still more than usable for social media publishing. It weighs almost nothing, it is stabilized and very cheap, so it is actually a pretty good starter lens for A6000 series cameras. Better alternative will be 18 to 135mm f3.5 to 5.6 and excellent Sigma primes like my favorite 16mm f1.4. Another great compact APS-C camera is Fuji X-T30. The highlights of this camera are 261 megapixel x trans sensor and autofocus system carried over from larger X-T3. X-T3 provides the best image quality in class, the autofocus is excellent and it can also shoot 4K video with no crop but with 10 minute recording limit. X-T30 is really tiny. The build quality won't match X-T3 but it is still more than good enough. It also has joystick and pretty good menu system so it is quite user friendly. Unfortunately it has no in-body image stabilization but at that size I can't really complain about that. The viewfinder is also very small and honestly not very pleasant to use. The battery life is about average. Fuji makes great 18-55mm f2.8-4 lens which provides great size to performance ratio and importantly it has great optical image stabilization so the lack of in-body image stabilization won't be that big of a deal with this lens. X-T30 is a great travel camera in my opinion. If you want even more features, better build quality, viewfinder and very advanced video features like 4K 60p 10-bit recording, you can go with X-T3. This is still pretty small camera, it is weather sealed and it has analog style controls that are a lot of fun to use. Just like the X-T30, it has no in-body image stabilization though, so you might want to use it with stabilized lens. X-T3 is still one of my most favorite cameras on the market and I recommend it for traveling as well. Another great camera in this category is Panasonic GX9. It has 20 megapixel micro four thirds sensor with impressive dynamic range and reasonable low light performance. You can generally use it up to ISO 1600 or even 3200 with acceptable amount of noise. It also has the best in-body image stabilization in this category. It is still very small but it has great controls and handling also probably the best in class. It has great touchscreen and user interface which also contributes to that. It is a solid video camera but the 4K has 1.26x crop and there is no mic input jack so it is not that suitable for more serious filmmaking. The battery life is about average, it uses field sequential panel in the viewfinder which is not that great. The autofocus works well for stills, in video not so much but it is usable in 1080p. Overall it is still a great travel camera and it is a lot of fun to use which is also important. Micro Four Thirds lens selection is also great for traveling, my most favorite is Leica 12 to 60 but you can also use something like this Pancake 12 to 32mm kit lens. 
If you want something even smaller that can still provide great image quality, high-end 1-inch sensor camera might be a good choice. My most favorite one at the moment is Canon G7X Mark III. It has 1-inch typed stacked backside illuminated CMOS sensor, probably made by Sony. It is also the first 1-inch sensor compact camera with mic input and also the first Canon camera with oversampled full sensor readout 4K video. I am very impressed by the image quality of this little camera. It shoots great stills with a lot of details and great colors. The video is very detailed and the codec is pretty solid as well. It still uses contrast-based autofocus, but it doesn't hunt, so even though it is a bit slower, it is not distracting like older contrast autofocus systems. It has pretty good 24-100mm full-frame equivalent lens with decent optical qualities and relatively bright f1.8-2.8 to aperture. It has very good optical image stabilization with auto level function, so you will get very stable video. The screen, user interface and the implementation of touch functionality is excellent on this camera. The battery life is pretty bad like on every camera in this category, but overall I have to say that I am very impressed by the G7X Mark III. I think that it is the most competitive Canon camera on the market at the moment. It seems like the Sony sensor in Canon body is really good combination. LX100 Mark II is an interesting alternative to 1-inch sensor cameras. It has the same micro Four third sensor as the GX9, but it uses pretty unique concept with fixed lens that won't cover the whole sensor, but you can choose your aspect ratio. It has 24-70mm f1.8-2.8 to .8 lens, which is pretty good, especially for the size. LX100 Mark II basically offers micro Four thirds performance in body that is closer to 1-inch sensor camera, so it is very portable. That also means that there are some compromises such as the fixed screen and the lack of mic input. I personally don't mind that because LX100 is all about the size to performance ratio and it is a niche camera. If the image quality in all conditions is a priority for you, you might want to bring a full frame camera. If you follow this channel, it won't be a surprise that I recommend Sony a7 III, especially if you are a hybrid shooter. This is still the best all round package in my opinion. It is the best in class in certain areas, it is just average in other areas, but it doesn't really have a major weakness. It has 24 megapixel backside illuminated full frame sensor with incredible dynamic range and great low light performance. It is so good that you don't really have to care about setting the correct exposure. It still has the best autofocus system in class in both stills and video. It is also the smallest relevant hybrid full frame camera and considering the size it also has very good controls. It can shoot very detailed oversampled 4K video and it has very advanced color settings. The battery life on a7 III is by far the best in class, it has two card slots and pretty efficient in-body image stabilization. The viewfinder and the screen are average at best and the user interface is pretty outdated. E-mount lens selection is great though. Tamron 28-75mm f2.8 Di3R XD and Sony G24-150 mm f4 are great all-round lenses. If you want the smallest setup possible, you can use for example Semiang AF primes. My most favorite prime lens for traveling is FE 24mm f1.4 GM, I have made a review of that one as well and it will be linked in the description. Overall, a7 III is currently my personal travel camera of choice. A very good alternative is Nikon Z6. It probably has the same sensor with great dynamic range, but it behaved a bit funny in my low light tests with some weird color patterns in shadows. It has great build quality and good controls, but some of the buttons are not very well placed. The autofocus is pretty reliable, but it is not quite as good as on the a7 III, even though it was significantly improved by firmware updates. It can also shoot very nice oversampled 4K video and it has really good in-body image stabilization. The battery life is not as good as on the a7 III, it only has one slot for XQD card and to be honest, I'm not the biggest fan of those. It is also a bit larger than the a7 III, but the difference is not that significant. I also really like the 24-70mm f4 kit lens. Overall I like the Z6, so if it suits your needs better than the a7 III, it is definitely a good choice.
If you are leaning more towards the video side, Panasonic G Drive is still the benchmark for all-round cameras with advanced video features. It is the biggest camera on this list, but it is also the most feature-packed. Despite that it is 2.5 years old, nothing can really match its future set. It can shoot 4K video with no crop up to 60p, and it can shoot 4K 10-bit up to 30p. It has great 5.5 stop in-body image stabilization, flip-out screen, a very good preamp, and so on. It also uses 20 megapixel micro for a third sensor, and it is a very capable stills camera. The autofocus in video is actually really good after the firmware updates. It is definitely usable for all-round use in both stills and video. The handling is great as well, the battery life is above average. There is just way too much to say in just one paragraph, but together with Sony 7 III and Fuji X-T3, I think that the GH5 is still one of the most capable cameras on the market. Panasonic G9 is one of my personal favorites, it is a bit more stills oriented camera, it has a bit better dynamic range, and the handling is also a bit better than with GH5. It has very good autofocus in both stills and video, as well as the 80 megapixel high res mode. Probably my most favorite thing about the G9 is 6.5 stop in body image stabilization, which allows you to take 5 second handheld exposures and it makes the video super stable. It is very rugged and weather sealed. I think that it is a great travel camera if you want something with great handling. It has no 10 bit recording or vlog, but it can still shoot full sensor 4K 60p. DJI Osmo Pocket is another of my personal favorites. It is basically one over 2.3 inch sensor combined with 26 mm lens mounted on a tiny gimbal with a little handle. It is indeed a pocket camera as the name suggests. It has the best image quality of all small cameras. Even the low light performance is decent thanks to that f2 lens. Stabilization is great on this one, it completely minimizes the shaking in static shots, it smooths out camera movement and the footage looks just really good. I always take this one with me as a B camera because it is so small. It has a ton of great features such as active tracking, motion lapses, 9 shot panorama stitching, great stills quality, 4K 60p and so on, so make sure to check out my long term review. To be honest, I actually recommend Osmo Pockets to everyone. It is definitely worth it in my opinion. GoPro Hero 7 Black is mostly known as an action camera, but I think that it works even better as a travel camera or vlogging camera. It is just a good wide angle compact camera with very good stabilization and image quality. It is very durable and water resistant up to 10 meters, which is obviously useful for underwater filming, so it is a good travel camera in my opinion. DJI Osmo Action is a very good alternative to Hero 7 Black. It is actually better in a lot of categories. It has narrower field of view, but it can de-warp the footage and get rid of that action camera fisheye look. It has much better screen and it destroys the GoPro in terms of the handling and the controls. It also has the second screen on the front side of the camera for vlogging and a filter thread. It has great rock steady stabilization and it is water resistant up to 11 meters. The over sharpening was also fixed in the latest firmware update, so now I might actually prefer it over the GoPro overall. The only things that need to be fixed are the leg with rock steady stabilization and I hope that there will be a way to connect the external mic in the future. A bonus camera that I will mention is Insta360 ONE X. As the name suggests, it is 360 camera that can shoot 5.7K video. The biggest strength of this camera is that you don't really have to worry about it. You can just have it with you, start recording, and then you can do the rest in post-production. That is also a downside at the same time, because the footage is not ready out of the camera and you need to choose your composition in post. The image quality is pretty good, it blends well with 1080p footage. That option not to worry about the filming is still a great advantage in many situations, so it is worth considering for a lot of applications. So these were the best travel cameras that I've used in the past couple of months. My top 5 at the moment are Sony a7 III, Fuji X-T30, Panasonic GH5, Canon G7X Mark III and DJI Osmo Pocket. Which one is the best for you depends on your preferences, so I hope that this video was helpful and that it will help you choose the right camera for your travels. 
So that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. I hope that you like this video and that you found it to be useful. Stay tuned for more videos and maybe consider subscribing if you don't want to miss my future content. I appreciate your feedback in form of thumbs up or thumbs down. If you would like to ask anything or share your opinion, please do so in the comment section and see you next time.